Hi, I'm Steve Casely from CBT Nuggets, and this micro nugget is focused on the Requirements Traceability Matrix, or the RTM. The RTM, in my humble opinion, is one of the most misused, misunderstood tools in our Project Manager's Toolkit, but yet it is one of the most key tools that we can use as a Project Manager to ensure everything gets done, and gets validated. And we do that through the RTM, and the RTM can be as simple as a spreadsheet where we list the requirements on one axis and we list the validation on the other. And as discussed, the RTM is as simple as it tracks all of the requirements. So we enter all of the requirements as they're decomposed into our RTM, and then we use to the RTM to validate that the requirements are delivered. By that, we have a WBS element assigned to every one of the requirements. And finally, we ensure that all of the requirements are validated by test cases or other validation methods. We present the results of our validation to our business sponsor saying, here are all of your requirements. Here's all of the validation. There is nothing left to chance. So therefore, your acceptance of this project should be automatic because we have proven to you through this wonderful tool called the RTM that the project has in fact satisfied 100% of what it is you've asked me to complete. And a requirements traceability matrix can be as simple as a spreadsheet, or you can buy some very powerful and very sophisticated requirements traceability tools in the marketplace to provide additional functionality. But to start off with, I would recommend you just start with a simple spreadsheet and you develop your requirements traceability matrix incrementally. The first thing you do is you simply list all of your requirements. So, our preliminary requirements from our house is 1.0. We need a house. And at the highest level, that's our scope for our project. Now, that's not enough to deliver a project against, and that's not enough to measure. So we begin to do our requirements decomposition as part of the standard project. We say, okay, we need three bedrooms in our house. So that becomes requirement 1.1. And requirement 1.2 says I need two bathrooms. And requirement 1.3 says I need a formal living room. And requirements 1.4 says I need an eating nook and so on and so on. So you start to flesh out your main requirements into the next level of decomposition. And then you do further decomposition. So within the three bedrooms, I need a 1.1.1, which is my master bedroom and a 1.1.2, which is the child's room, and a 1.1.3, which is gonna be the guest room. And then within the, the, the master bedroom, again, you begin to do further decomposition where it's 1.1.1, I need a walk-in closet. And within my bathrooms, I have my master bathroom where I need a five-piece bathroom set, et cetera, et cetera. But you simply take all of your requirements as you decomp decompose them, and you track them in your traceability matrix. And that's requirements traceability matrix part one complete. The next thing we need to do is we then validate that we have WBS elements in place to ensure that all of these requirements are be being completed. So as we develop our WBS, we say, okay, this requirement is being delivered by this large level group in my WBS of WBS element 12. And the three bedrooms is being supported by this WBS element. And you, again, simply map all of your WBS elements into your requirements. And when this is done, you should have no instances such as I have right here, where I have a requirement, but I have no WBS element. So that means I have work missed. I'd go back to my WBS and I would find out, oh, Yes, I forgot that. That should be line 342 that I just added into my WBS, and it's good. And then we do a further mapping that there are no WBS elements that don't map directly back to a requirement. Part one of a requirements traceability. We then work on our project 
and then we begin to do our validation. So as we identify our validation methods, we say we're going to validate our house, we're going to do physical inspections, in some instances we're going to do measurements, in some instances we're going to have a plumbing inspector come in and do validations of our home, and in some instances we're going to have our electrical inspector, and so on and so on and so on, and we begin to list our validation methods, and we say how are we going to validate that the house is appropriate? I'm going to do an inspection. Perfect. How are we going to validate that the three bedrooms exist? Well, I'm going to inspect that and I'm probably going to measure it and compare it to my blueprint. How am I going to validate the, the master bedroom and so on and so on. And I'm going to come down here to my master bathroom and the bathroom itself is going to be validated by inspection and measurement. But my f five pieces of my plumbing is going to be validated by my plumbing inspector. And when this is all done, we do the same thing. We validate that we have no requirements that don't have at least one validation method in place. And we validate that we don't have any validation methods that are not validating our WBS, in which case at this preliminary level of my WBS, I have no validation for my electrical inspector, but that's simply because I haven't completed my definition. I would expect I will need an electrical inspector in my house. And that completes our micro nugget on requirements traceability matrix. I hope this has been informative for you and thank you very much for viewing.